Now as we come before the word, let's prepare ourselves. Lord, speak to each one of us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation chapter 14, so many, so many things to learn. But the portion that we are going to study today, it's, it's very serious. It's, it's the most, what you call somber moments in the whole scripture. It's the most frightening, the portion that we are going to study today. It's hard to express using our language. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us. Let's pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for this time that you have given us. And as we come before your precious word, Master, open our understanding. Speak to each one of us. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to praise you and worship you. Bless the word, Lord. You know our needs. You know where we are. You know how many more days are left in our life. Father, bless us with your word. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. I praise God for this beautiful time that God has given us. Let's turn our attention to book of Revelation chapter 14. Verses 14 to 20. Book of Revelation chapter 14 verses 14 to 20. I request you to open your Bibles and let's read together. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat, like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar who had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the wine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the wine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden outside the city and blood came out of this winepress even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furloughs. So here I pray that the Lord helps us to understand this is the most somber moments where without much fanfare heaven reveals how the judgment falls on mankind may the lord help us let's read verse 14 and i looked and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat, like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. There are so many uh, things here that the Spirit of God is mentioning. And let's go through it one by one. Now, till now we were we were watching how the three angels are coming and proclaiming, conveying the message. But here, the sight is different. Here, the first thing is, John sees a white cloud. And upon the cloud, one sat. May the Lord help us. The first thing is, a white cloud. Now, what does this white cloud stand for? What does it reveal? 
we pray that the spirit of god may help us to understand what he wants to reveal through each of these things there is a message hidden behind it these sights are revealing and if the spirit of god doesn't help us we we'll, for us it will just be a white cloud that's all nothing else for many people yeah that's it what is there in that white cloud yes there's a lot of things there what does it stand for let's turn to daniel chapter 7 verse 13 daniel chapter 7 verse 13 The scripture says I saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him here also I want to draw your attention to the clouds of heaven one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven so revelation 14 the white cloud daniel chapter 7 clouds so this white clouds shows the majesty the glory the awesomeness of the godhead how glorious god is now how do you explain it in words when we worship what are we keeping before us how glorious god is to whom can we liken him the brightness example we have seen the american president wherever he travels let it be the air force one you see the american president's seal is there on the door of that plane that's called the presidential seal when he stands up and holds a press conference you can see that seal of the president that that shows the dignity or the authority of the person that's all that man can do what else we try our level best every country has its own way of showing its glory you must have seen the parades of the national days you see the army and all sorts of things we are trying to show how glorious we are but it all pales it's nothing in comparison to the glory of the one who created this whole universe who who brought this whole universe into existence that white cloud shows the brilliance of his glory that's why when we worship him we humble ourselves we are not worthy but it's his grace that has made us worthy to stand in his presence to take his name on our lips to call him our father and given us that great hope given us those promises how glorious so when we worship god that's the base of our worship we are not worshiping him because he just kept me healthy or just gave me a house or a job no sir even if i don't have any of these things he is glorious next now the one uh, the scripture says one sat like the son of man so the next thing is there's someone on that cloud white cloud and he is sitting and the scripture says the son of man and it's very clear it's no one else but jesus christ himself but here the spirit of god is focusing on the humanity of jesus christ he is not called the son of god here like the son of man that's what we read in daniel 7 also son of man and he is sitting he has a crown golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle let's take some moments what does this reveal 
in this scripture 14 to 20, we see two harvests. And we need to, and these in this, we have to focus on three things. These two harvests, one is a grain harvest, the other is a wine, grapes harvest. Number first thing is the harvester. In, in these two harvests, the harvesters are not one, but two different harvesters. Number two, the sickle. Number three, those who are being harvested. The three things that we have to understand in this portion. Number one, the harvester. Number two, we see the sickle. Number three, those who are being harvested. So here the first one, we see the one who is sitting on the cloud is called as the Son of Man. Now why is the Spirit of God focusing on the humanity of Christ? Because He is the only one worthy to judge. We all need to understand, realize the seriousness of this scripture. We as human beings, we have many good men, good philosophers, religious teachers, many, many intellectuals. But if there is anyone who is worthy to judge the human race, anyone worthy to judge the human race, it is the Son of Man. Mark here, not Son of God, but Son of Man. May the Lord help us to understand that. Why as Son of Man, He is worthy to judge? Let's turn to John chapter 5 verse 22. John chapter 5 verse 22. Here we read, for the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Verse 27. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. I am again reading verse 27. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. As son of man, he is the only one who has the authority to execute judgment. To proclaim judgment. Execute it. Why? On what basis? Heaven left all its glory. Came down amongst us. Walked as man took the human form heaven came down walked as man was tempted in all things overcame died on the cross in our place rose again from the dead and declared that he is not man. The resurrection of Christ reveals he is not man, but God manifested in the flesh. Paid the price to fulfill his judgment. Overcame all temptations. That's the reason the crown that is wearing is a golden crown. It's a victor's crown, not the royal crown. There's a difference between these two crowns. The royal crown shows he is king, but the crown mentioned here is the victor's crown. The one that a person earns when he wins. Christ 
became victorious. Walking as man, fulfill the demands of the law, faced all temptations face on. He faced the fury of sin in all its strength. And after being victorious, he is judging. That's fearful. Because he, you and I, also have to stand before the throne of Christ. Those who are born again, we don't stand before the white throne of judgment. But we have to stand before the throne of Christ. If he has been victorious, will he allow us any space or any leeway? He is the one who is going to judge. How did Christ overcome all these temptations? He was surrendered 100% for the will of the Father. That's where we differ. That's where our failure is. We say we want to follow God. But then, we have our own ambitions, our own desires, our own wills. That's where we surrender. And it becomes hard for us to be an overcomer. Let's judge ourselves. Let's, let's analyze our own life. Am I living for His will? Have I surrendered my life for, to God so that I can live? For only His will, not for my ideas, not for my agendas, not for my desires. Today it's so worrying to see believers. We say we are believers and then the way we walk, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we think, it reveals something else. We compromise. We cut corners. We want to please people. Because we say, yeah, Christ wants us to love our neighbor, so we, we love. We cut corners. Then how will we be victorious? Where my primary desire is not God's will. Look at Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane in that weak time also. Look at him pray. Father, if it be thy will. That means in that hour of agony, what comes out is thy will be done. Surrendered to the Father's will, to the very core of his being. Am I surrendered to that level, to that depth, deep down within? Am I surrendered? I say I love God. I pray. I read my Bible. I give my offerings. Fine. But am I surrendered to the core of my being, to my Father's will? Then only can we be victorious. The temptations. What is the whole idea behind these temptations that the enemy brings? Do thine own. Why are you surrendered? You have your own freedom. You have your intellect. Why don't you have your own desires and pray and just go about your own life? That's what the world is doing. So Christ, the Son of Man, why has He been given that authority? No one else. Walked as man. Obeyed the law. Fulfilled the demands of the law. Fulfill the desires of the Father. Lived a life that's pleasing to heaven. Hung on the cross. Rose again as that victor's crown. And now, that very hand that has that nail imprints, has that sickle that's really sharp. This is not the harvest of believers. Many people confuse. They say, to harvest, so this is harvesting of believers. To harvest believers, this is not the scene. He doesn't have to appear as son of man 
for that great harvest. That's something else. Here, let's read verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple. But before that, here in verse 14, the last word is, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And that sharp sickle, let's take a moment. It shows execution of the judgment. Cut. And here we read, one who is the son of man, he is sitting in that cloud. He is not standing. When Stephen was being stoned, he didn't see Christ sitting. He saw Christ standing on the right hand of the Father. But here, the Son of Man is sitting. What does it mean? Waiting for the orders. Waiting for the time appointed to execute the judgment. That means there is a time that is set for the execution of the judgment. Verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So here, the next thing that we need to understand here is, the time has come and the angel comes out of the temple. Earlier we saw three angels proclaiming the message. But here another, the fourth angel is coming out of the temple means coming out from the very presence of God the Almighty. He has been in the presence of God and the message is coming from God himself. And what is the message? crying out with a loud voice to him, the harvester who is sitting on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap. Time has come for thee to reap. So here, we need to understand, there is a time that heaven has set. No one knows the time. Let's turn to Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Mark 13, 32. Chapter 13, verses 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels who are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So he saw the Son of Man sitting and now the, messi the messenger comes and he says, take the sickle, thrust thy sickle. So, from this we understand God has a time for everything concerning our lives, for everything. And that time only the Father knows. No one else. Concerning my life, I don't know how much time is left. You must have seen the countdown that takes place before a rocket goes up. Nine, eight, seven, six. So when that countdown is going on, what message does it convey? The time is running over. The time has approached. No more time. Am I aware that the time I, my mother conceived me, the countdown started? I am not aware whether I am at six. Am I at four? Am I standing at one? After one, the next, you don't see any digit. It's the blast off. None of us know 
where we are at this moment of our life. The countdown is going on. But before this great judgment, we need to look at the nature of God. Let's turn to 2 Peter 3.9. 2 Peter 3.9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Look at the nature of God. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, perish but that all should come to repentance. He gives opportunities after opportunities. He is long-suffering. But then, Revelation chapter 16, verse 7. Revelation 16, 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. On one hand, he gives opportunities after opportunities for people to come to the knowledge of Christ, to realize how precious life is. He is long-suffering. But on the other hand, judgment. His judgments are true and righteous. His justice demands that judgment be executed. And the time has come as the Son of Man sits on that cloud with that sickle. And the scripture says, chapter 14, look at the words of the angel, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Now what does that mean? The harvest is ripe. If you read verse, uh, 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 verse 18 of that same chapter, And another angel came out from the altar who had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the wine of the earth, for our grapes are fully ripe. So here, the grapes are fully ripe, and earlier, the harvest is fully ripe ripe. Harvest of the earth is ripe. So, are these two same? The word ripe. Usually when we harvest wheat, it's ripe. We know now the time has come to cut, to harvest and to store the grain. But that's not what it means here in the word ripe. It's not like the case with the grapes. The grapes are full. They are ripe. It's time to gather them, to put them in the wine press. But here, the harvest of the earth is ripe means it, no more time to spend on it. It is withered. Time is over. Do not expect anything more from it. All opportunities are over. Now there is no more expectations. How frightening it is. God gives time. God gives opportunities. But a time comes when heaven knows now there is no need for any more opportunities. The time has come. Just to help you understand, I have some plants here kept in pots because it has been raining hard. Some plants have just dried up. But I have not uprooted them. I have not thrown them off. I am still waiting. After this rainy season is over, a day will come, I will sit with that pot and look at that plant. Try to figure out, is there any scope for a new shoot to come out? Is there life in this plant? I'll examine it. And when I know there's no life, 
That's the moment. I just uproot it, throw it off, and plant a new one. Same way here, the word ripe means it has withered. No point in keeping that plant anymore. Use the sickle. Cut it off. Time is over. Let's take some time. Look at our life. When heaven judges, the time that God has given me, am I walking according to God's will? Because here, in verse 20, it's so frightening. And the winepress was trodden outside the city and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse's bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. In the same chapter when the grapes are being threshed, blood will run up to the horse's bridles means it will be four feet in height. Blood of man flowing down. And the distance is a space of 1,600 furlongs a sight. That will be the climax of the great tribulation. Man's blood, four feet high, flowing 1,600 furlongs. With that, the great tribulation comes to an end and the millennium starts. How did the World War II end? Japan attacked Pearl Harbor and the United States dropped two atom bombs, one in Nagasaki, the other at Hiroshima. Japan surrendered. Here, the last battle, Antichrist and God be willing, next session we'll be going into that. But here we are looking at the first harvest. Time is over. Time to execute. Son of man uses the sickle. Let's look at our own life. There are so many out there who have not understood about the love of God. They have hardened their hearts. Many times when we look at those people who get away by committing every kind of evil and we who sincerely love the Lord and we face troubles and they don't have any troubles in their life, at times we get confused. Why is God not troubling them? A day is coming. Just like he told Abraham about the Amorites. I'm not giving you the land now. 400 years when the sin of the Amorites will be full. What does that mean? These Amorites will on their own prove that they are fit to be judged. Same way, when man hardens his heart, God gives him a space so that he on his own proves that he is worthy to be judged. That's when the judgment falls. On the other hand, we should thank God for all the problems that we have because it helps us to stick to the right way. We turn left and right. God punishes us, brings us back. How grateful we have to be to our Father. How much He loves us. Now we are going to pray. The first harvest. The white cloud. How glorious. The brightness of His majesty. He revealed himself on Mount Sinai. Children of Israel ran for their life. We are in his presence. This great God, with all his glory, he has decided to dwell in this earthen vessel with all its weaknesses. How grateful we have to be. How humbling it is. Almighty God has decided to take residence in this earthen vessel. Today we have nuclear medicine also. When it comes to treating cancer and all nuclear medicine. 
the one who dwells in me can he not cure me from the sicknesses that i have in my body does he need x-ray ct scan mri or nuclear medicines he has the power to heal he is the same unchanging jesus but he decided to allow some weaknesses in my body health issues so that i may remain humble and love him and trust him jesus heals today also his power has never diminished it's the same but he dis- resides in me he wants me to be victorious what does victorious mean surrendered for the father's will temptations do come lord i just want your will look at christ as man spending night hours alone pray what was the need for him to spend time praying as son of man he knows the limitations spend time pray walked a life pleasing to the father heaven said this is my beloved son he is the one sitting on that cloud with that sickle with that victor's crown the message comes time is up no more grace they have proved that there is no hope for them this is the time to judge and you know as soon as the sickle is thrown the seven vials one after the other are poured on this earth and at the end of the seven you have the great battle where the blood flows 4 feet high to for 1600 furlongs what a sight it will be what a fearful sight how many should be slaughtered if flood blood has to flow that high it will be the greatest slaughter that mankind has ever witnessed in its history that will be that will bring the climax of the great tribulation let's close our eyes the world is getting ready for the great judgment as we study god's word am i surrendered for god's will in the core of my being am i sure i know he is faithful i know he'll do everything for his glory Let anything happen in my life I have surrendered myself. Yes, I commit mistakes. But he is faithful. Challenges are there, but he is faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. The Father has given all authority to the Son of Man to execute judgment. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. May God bless us all by these words. If any one of us has not yet surrendered our life to Christ. Under the heavens, above the earth, there is only one who has the authority to judge the human race. and that's no one else but Jesus Christ under the heavens above the earth there is only one way through which man can be saved that's by accepting Jesus Christ as his lord and savior that's the only way man can escape the judgment of god if anyone has not yet accepted Christ living on your own you think you are the master of your life that's a big mistake 
you are not the master you are a creation there happens to be a creator who has numbered your days and the countdown is on none of us know whether it's i am at 7 or 5 or 3 or 1 the countdown is on the coming of the lord is near let's humble ourselves may god bless us by this before we close some prayer requests supriya so please pray for somia my sister her birthday is on 24th august she is in delhi preparing for ias exam pray for her that god reveals himself to her ocean masi it's been years i have digestion problem even medication has not worked and i have thyroid doctor gave me time of one month if it is not cured then this problem will be for lifetime I'm completely dependent on God please pray for my healing Vishal I want in filling of the holy spirit and pray for my healing I want to depend on God not on tablets Let's pray hallelujah First of all let's surrender ourselves Thank you Jesus Let us decide to live for his glory Health issues any other issues that come God allows all of this so that we can A hundred person surrendered for the will of the Father. It's not hard for Him to heal us if He created us out of dust. It's not a big thing for Him to heal us from our health issues. By His stripes we are healed. That's what Christ said. He paid the price on the cross. sickness and all came because of sin since the price has been paid the name of jesus is enough to heal us but let's surrender ourselves hallelujah father we praise you and thank you for this beautiful time thank you lord for the opportunity you gave us to spend time to worship you to sing songs and to study your word Thank you Lord for speaking to us how glorious you are the white cloud the brightness of your majesty the brilliance Lord we can't comprehend we have not seen anything like that all that we have seen maximum is the presidential seal with a man walking around with his security that's the glory of man or some gold that's all but lord you are glorious help us to always remember that as we worship you thank you for speaking to each one of us lord in these days help us to walk the way you want us to walk the world as it is getting darker and darker getting ready for the judgment lord we all have a big responsibility as we move around as we work help us in these days to cry for our nation cry for our neighborhood cry for those whom we know who have not yet known you before the judgment strikes or help them to come to a realization of how precious life in that life is and surrender themselves to the or will help us in these days lord to cry Lord now we pray for all those who have sent their prayer requests Lord we pray for Saumia as she is studying Lord in these days work in her heart Lord help her also to realize your love help us help her to recognize the truth and we bind all powers of darkness that tries to hinder her from knowing the truth Satan you have no right over her neither over the family Lord may your light shine on her heart Lord we pray for brother Ocean. Lord as the doctors have said they don't have any hope but you are the healer. Lord we pray that you may stretch your hand and give him complete healing. So that through this body your name may be glorified. And help him 
to walk according to your will for your glory you are the healer we rebuke all powers of darkness we rebuke all sicknesses in the name of jesus christ for giving complete healing lord we pray for brother vishal as he is also having health issues you are the healer lord he has sent his desire that he wants to experience the infilling of the holy spirit lord your coming is so near you have justified us we surrender ourselves for the sanctification work but lord on our own we cannot do anything we pray that your spirit may take charge of our brother transform him into your nature burn away all that that's not according to your will purify or may your spirit take charge and we rebuke all sicknesses that's affecting his body help him to be strengthened in you thank you lord lord we pray for all those who have been joining for this service no matter wherever they are lord we pray that your will be fulfilled in each one's life thank you lord for this fellowship in jesus most holy name we pray amen now may the love of god the father grace of son jesus christ and the communion of the holy spirit be with each and every one of us till the coming of our lord amen and amen may god bless all of you and before we close just an information uh, we actually started this online service because of the covid situations we started it way back in march 18 2020 now even after life has got back to normalcy and everything is back to normal we have not stopped the online services because during this covid period many people joined us and there are people who don't have any place to go for worship they are all by themselves so we didn't stop it we continue so uh, now many people they call us on the phone and they ask us uh, that do you have your church in such as such place or city and there are places our ministry is not that big and we uh, we don't have ministers everywhere so but in these past days we have been praying and put this matter before the lord lord but there are so many of our beloved ones who are in places where there is no fellowship no one what do we do and we are praying so if any one of you who has no place of worship no one there to have fellowship with you So we we'll request you to get in touch with us on WhatsApp so that we are praying that what can be done for your situation holy communion water baptism and there are many other things uh all these spiritual matters are there so we are praying so get in touch with us so that we know where you are and how we can help you so that you can grow spiritually and be a blessing and be a useful vessel in the kingdom of God So I pull this matter in prayers and you are free, uh, feel free to join uh, contact us and I pull us in your prayers right after this session we have the zoom session if you have any questions you can join us and may god bless all of you I pull us in your prayers our lord is coming very soon maranatha